Hey everyone, so today I'll be doing an oil change on the GT350R. Before I get started, I just want to cover everything that you're going to need for this process. Now, every GT350 takes 10 quarts of 5W50 engine oil. There's lots of different oil manufacturers out there. It's up to you which one you want to use. I street drive the car, so I think the factory Motorcraft 5W50 will be more than sufficient for my needs. And as far as the filters for the GT350, now, the early cars had a spin-on style filter. That was the 2069. And around 2017, Ford switched over to a cartridge style filter. Originally, it was the 2062, but they superseded that with the 2087. Personally, if you have a car with a cartridge style filter, I think this is the best option as far as oil filters go, including the aftermarket options. This is the only oil filter that has a steel sleeve on the inside. So I think this is the most robust of all the filters available for this car. And then as far as the tools that you're going to need, you're going to need a ratchet for getting the plug out of the oil pan. You're going to need a T30 Torx for getting down the oil filter access door. And then you're going to need a 27 millimeter socket and a six inch extension for getting the oil filter housing down if you have a cartridge style filter. And then you should also be using a torque wrench because of the excessive vibrations caused by the flat plane crank engine. It is very important to properly torque the oil filters on these cars. The early cars with the spin on style filters was 16 to 18 foot pounds and the later cars with the cartridge filters is 16 to 19 foot pounds. And then as far as getting the oil in and out of the car, I have one of these Forma funnels that will basically take any shape. I'll use this underneath the oil filter housing to prevent oil from dripping under the car. And then just a standard funnel to get the oil back in. And since I'm working under my lift today, I'll be using my Milwaukee underbody light as well as I will be using my OEM tools upright oil drain. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, and with your ratchet, you're just gonna turn this counterclockwise. You can use an extension if you want. You don't really need to. It comes off relatively easily. Now, when this comes out, it's gonna come out pretty quickly. So you wanna be ready. Again, 10 quarts, a lot of oil in this thing. So just be ready for it. There's one gasket on there. And once the oil gets past the gasket, it's gonna come out really, really quick. And just like that, came off nicely. I didn't break the ears off of the plug. Now I know there are aftermarket plugs available for this car. I don't wanna use an aftermarket. I actually saw one of the members of my Shelby forum. He actually had a problem. He was on track and his aftermarket plug blew out on track and they actually caught it on film. So I'm just gonna stick with the factory one for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this drain. Again, it's gonna take a while, 10 quarts. Oil's not too dirty, but it's got a lot of time on it, but not a lot of mileage. So I'll let this drain for a little while, and then we'll move over to the oil filter. All right, and the oil filter access door is just inside of the driver's side front wheel. So T30 Torx comes down pretty simply. There might be some rocks or debris under there. That's pretty common. And once you get that out of the way, the oil filter housing is right there. So essentially I'm gonna use that Forma funnel and make a bridge so the oil, instead of draining all underneath the car, I'm gonna run it all the way out to the end here and get it either into my small little pan that I use or the main upright pan. So let me get that set up. All right, with my Forma funnel in place, I have my little two quart oil pan underneath that I use for small jobs like this. My 27 millimeter socket right on the base of the filter housing and then just turn it normal counterclockwise to loosen it.
All right, so just let this sit for a few minutes and then I'll just grab it from underneath. Just wobble the housing off. This probably could still be a considerable amount of oil in it. I'll just slide it down here and let the rest of it drain out. And the filter came with it. Sometimes the filter will stick to the car itself, to the actual filter mount. In this case, it came out. So I'll just let this sit here and continue draining for a few more minutes. I'll take it over to the workbench, get everything cleaned up, and then we'll start buttoning everything up again. Okay, and over on the workbench, I've got the old oil filter outlet. It looks good. It's not crushed. If you over torque these, you can actually crush them. I'm replacing it with the same 2087 with the steel core on the inside. You can just use a screwdriver, a pick, and take off the two old O-rings. Just make sure that the threads are clean. It might leave a little bit of O-ring residue in the slots where they sit, but that's fine. You're just gonna put the O-rings back in its place. Also, look inside here. There's a little cylindrical retainer that holds the oil filter in place. It's important that that is not damaged or broken. If you over torque these, that can happen. So you wanna be real careful not to over torque it. Definitely go by your torque spec. And this just gets rolled on the same way it does for any other cartridge filter. Now the new ones are a little bit tougher to get on because they haven't been sitting on here so they haven't pre-stretched yet. So you just wanna put a little bit of oil on them just so they go on a little bit easier. And we're just gonna basically just roll them down into place. So this is a little bit messier. It's not a bad idea to maybe use a set of gloves, but it's a little bit harder to get a grip on these with gloves on. So that's your choice. It's also a good idea to get an extra one of these housings. I have one on the off chance that, one, that this filter housing does get damaged in some way. It's not too expensive to have a backup ready to go so the car doesn't become disabled while you have to order one. And if you order this as a kit, it comes with one of these 2087s if you are having a hard time locating it. So I'll just wipe this down a little bit more. Everything here is lubricated. This will slip in here like this. I'm actually gonna mount this on the car first and then I will thread the filter into it. So let's go ahead and get this started. All right, with the oil filter mounted into the adapter on the engine. I'm just gonna slide this on very carefully. Just rotate it until the threads start to grab. There we go. We're beautiful. I'm gonna thread this in. I'm gonna, I'm not, you could try to line up the original factory marks. I don't know where you need to start the threads to get them to line up. There's a lot of threads on this thing. But worst case scenario, you can always put your own marks on there as a reference for yourself. Should have very little resistance going in. Make sure you put oil on those O-rings so they slide on easily since they have a very tight fit. Once they start getting close to the housing, all right, now I'm pretty close to the housing. I'm basically close to where I want to be. So now I'm gonna switch from the ratchet to the torque wrench. This is very important. Don't skip this step. I know everyone who works on cars is guilty of doing this. I'm included. But don't skip this. This is very important. 18 foot-pounds I have this thing set to. Check one more time. That's it. 18 foot-pounds. There we go. So that filter is now properly installed. And I can't really tell where the mark is from here. I think it's pretty close. But I'm just gonna wipe up a little bit of excess oil that dripped around the housing, and we'll get this buttoned up. All right, and finally, just to button up underneath the car, just put the plug back in clockwise to tighten it. It has a couple of ears on it, so there is no torque spec. Once the ears line up, you'll actually feel it pull itself into place, and that is locked down. Just make sure you wipe up any excess oil that you find underneath here. You don't want to think you have an oil leak when you actually don't. Line up your door, your oil filter access door. Make sure you wiped up any oil that may have dripped off the housing. Don't go crazy with this. You don't have to make it that tight, it's just plastic. Okay, so that's tightened up. This is tightened up. We correctly made sure that we torqued the oil filter housing. 
And we're done underneath the car. So now I'll lower it down and we'll put oil back in it. And finally, the car gets 10 quarts of 5W50. So it's probably gonna take a little while to put all the oil in. And as with any other oil change, once you are done, make sure you run the car, make sure your oil pressure is good. Let it run for about 30 seconds. Check for any leaks underneath the car. Let the car sit for five minutes, double check the level to make sure you have a sufficient amount. So hope you enjoyed the video. And I actually have one other recommendation that I wanna cover before I finish up. All right, and while the car is refilling with oil, I like to fill out my maintenance records. Just a basic binder I put together with a spreadsheet I made up that consists of the date, the mileage, a description of the work performed, and any receipts that I have relative to the work I've done, I put here. Both I do this for, in case I need to make a warranty claim, I can show that I've been maintaining the vehicle, and also I think that this helps a lot for resale value. So also don't forget, once you're done filling the car with oil, to reset the oil life indicator, which I will cover in a video that I will link at the end of this. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.